And some of us are going to have tremendous, amazing high vibrational experiences. And we're going to have wonderful time on earth while others are in absolute peril. It's just deciding which path you want to take for yourselves. So part of, uh, if you want to call it a prophecy, is a turning of the tide, a shift from the old paradigm into the new. We call this the new earth or a new earth. Hi, everyone. We're going to be talking to the Pleiadians today, and we're going to be diving in deep in regards to what they have in store for us for the future. Is there a prophecy unfolding at this time? And then of course, I'm going to take your questions. I have several questions here already, and I have been away for the last week because I dove in and had a little bit of a surgical procedure done on my left leg. And, um, I had to have that taken care of. When when you're 23, when you're young and dumb, <laughs> you don't think about jumping up on a counter at work. And I knocked my groin region on the left side, which impacted a vein. And uh, then that led to, it ended up uh, basically being a varicose vein forming down my leg. So I don't know if any of you guys have had that procedure done. And I'm really a lot happier now that I've had that uh, removed. So I've been I've been at this now for almost nine years, you guys. <laughs> nine years, okay, <laughs> long time. I feel like I've kind of seen it all in the spiritual community, if that makes sense. And not saying that I know everything, because I don't. It, that would be silly to say that I do. What I've seen over the past almost nine years in the spiritual community, okay. And for me, anytime you're seeing someone go down a ton of rabbit holes and they're focusing on the heaviness and the negativity, now that doesn't mean that you shouldn't educate yourself, okay? Like, educate yourself as to what's really going on. Feel your internal guidance system. Feel what feels best and what does not. Don't just go following blindly behind anyone and everyone like really feel if if that movie you're watching is really best suited for you to watch or that tv show or that youtube video or whatever you're watching but what i've noticed is individuals that are hyper focus focused fixated on karmic debt okay the reptilians the cabal what else am i missing anybody else have any others Anybody who's focused and fixated and talking about those things relentlessly and oh, the, the ascension process on earth is jeopardized. You really think twice about listening to them or following them. Like obviously feel if it resonates or not. To me, it's never resonated. It's like listening to somebody talk about shadow work and they've been talking about it for 10 years and they've been doing it for like 10 years and they're still doing it and they're still fixated on shadow work so focused on the the darker aspects of themselves well no kidding they're still focused on it 10 years later because the more you focus and fixate on something the more you attract and manifest those thoughts feelings beliefs people in your life experiences so I remember channeling one day and Mary Magdalene came in and said, why don't you talk about light work? And I was like, light work? Nobody talks about light work. So when she discussed this with me, it's really about focusing on what you appreciate about yourself. What are you grateful for? What do you love? What is it that you, even the simplest, smallest of things. And if there's absolutely nothing that you can think of, the other suggestion is, go out and help other people go out and be of service of others if if your mom needs help if if your dad needs help if your brother needs help or if a, your neighbor needs their walkway swept be of service to others the ego loves to live in the fear of the future and the worry of the past doesn't it the mind loves to go there and we're going to go there it's just how long are you going to go there for? How often are you going to go there for? 
And are you going to catch yourself in the moment? And then bring your attention and awareness back to now and remind yourself that you've asked the angels, you've asked your spirit guides, you've asked source frequency to help you. So it's already in motion. And if you think it's something new, write it down. And then they'll read it and they'll start helping you with that. So it's just to remind yourself to everything is at ease. Everything is at peace. And if, if I'm notified to take action steps and all of a sudden I feel like a nudging in some direction or like I, like an urgency sensation in my body, then I'll double check with my angels and then I'll move in that direction. I suppose what I'm, what I'm recommending for everybody is, is if you are listening to people go down rabbit holes and focus on the cabal and all the rest of it, really see if that resonates with you. If they keep fixating on the darkness and the heaviness and the worry and the fear, then you really need to question whether you want to go along on that ride with them. Because in truth, what I've been told many times over is that the light has already won. I think the light was all already uh, meant to uh, supersede. It's always been here. The lighter aspect and, and the darker aspect. It's just what antenna are you vibrating to attract what? Where are you placing your thoughts, your attention and focus? So ultimately, if you think about the planet, she's already ascending. She's gone. She's, she's already a, 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 several miles ahead of us. So we and our free will, we get to decide and make decisions as to who we vote to put in power, who's got our best interests at heart, who's taking uh, who seriously, what actions and steps do I want to take. So it's my free will as to where I want to go. We might have a bumpy path collectively for a little bit, but rest assured, we will get back up on our feet and we will sprint ahead to catch up with the planet and all the other light beings that are here. And some of us are going to have tremendous, amazing high vibrational experiences. And we're going to have a wonderful time on Earth while others are in absolute peril. It's just deciding which path you want to take for yourselves. So if you don't like what's going on, voice it, ask for help in your mind or out loud, and they will hear you. And then as you are moving along, you'll be guided and steered in different directions. You'll have people come into your life. It was amazing to me when I used to have my uh, house cleaning company. I would have the most high vibrational, nicest, most kind, beautiful people hire me with awesome pets. Was I surprised? No, because I attracted that. I asked for that. So it's important to really make sure you ask for what you want in life. But everything else and everyone else is already gone. They're already on the path of ascension. And in fact, we are all ascending. Now, educate yourself. See what resonates with you. But then after that, where you place your attention on a regular basis is up to you. So I remember being on TikTok and I'm like, whoa. And my guardian angel said, Kristen, it's best not to focus here for you will not be participating and this is not your path. And we would like to keep your frequency higher. And I said, okay. Although it's pretty amazing what TikTok can share with you on the ground from people out of their own mouths rather than a news broadcaster at CNN or Fox, right? I'm going to uh, first channel a message from the Pleiadians. And to me, they feel like home. They feel like family because I've had so many Pleiadian lifetimes. To other people, the Octurians feel that way to them. And other people, Syrians. And other people, Andromedans. It's just we've tried on that coat a lot of times, if you want to say it like that. That's probably why I love going to Hawaii. I love uh, where I live, too, because it reminds me of the Pleiadian planet with, well, I should say planets, and the one in which I spent in particular, it reminds me of that. Lush, green, water. When you, when you come up on the Pleiadian planet, it's glowing this beautiful blue color. And then when you come up on Earth, you don't feel quite the same way. Let's put it that way. <laughs> 
But that doesn't mean that you can't make it what you want it to be. Irregardless of what you see here, you make it. You decide what you want. There's no pity parties here and there's no woe is me and feeling sorry for ourselves. You make it the way you want it to be. And how do you do that? Well, what are your dominant thoughts? What are you talking about the most? What are you fixated on the most? That's what you will make it be. The light's already gone. It's already there. It's just whether or not we want to tap into it and follow suit. <clears throat> all of us are going to have ascension symptoms. All of us are going to anchor the light. That's already happening for everyone. Every person I've actually ever met. Uh, and I've been checking in with a lot of readings that I've been having. And everyone is feeling ascension symptoms. You know, what they're saying to me at first is um, that I'm a bright light on this planet. I try to be. I'm not perfect. We don't come here to be perfect, do we? They're really happy and they're really proud of me for how far and how long I've come along um, here on this journey, trying to help so many others by way of allowing the angels to first school me or educate me, and then also allowing the angels to step forth and educate others through me. Um, you know, by way of my courses, classes, readings, what I do with my free lives that I offer every week. Ooh, I think we're getting a quote from uh, Lord of the Rings here. Every, uh, or a similar one, <clears throat> every path that we take, um, many of them, uh, depending on what path we're on, but <clears throat> most paths that we take and the one of life in general, we know will come to a close. It will come to an end. But it's what you do with the time spent. It's from the beginning to the, it's in, it, to the end. It's this part that matters most. Some of you will be guided to speak up and step forward and take action as to what is transpiring on earth at this time and what will be transpiring in the days ahead. And some of you will be asked to, to hang back, to step back and not participate in the goings on. There will be some in the legal community that will be uh, essentially like feeling like a push to step forward and help those who are being ill-treated and they honor those individuals. So people that are lawyers or in the legal community uh, and their they're hats off and clapping for these people to stand up for those who are being mistreated or ill-treated. And I'm just getting an example of the UK right now and what is transpiring there. Uh, nothing lasts forever. There's always a transition. Even with death, there is no end. It is a transition. So do not worry your minds about the goings on. Just know that everything is taking place as is meant to. Everything is transpiring as meant to. And we say meant to because the free will of those on earth, whether uh, the uh, a larger portion of them are still unawake and now we have this portion awakening and observing and being becoming aware social media has played a, a large role in this in helping to awaken the populace showcasing and showing them what's truly going on but irregardless of those who are unawake or those who are awakening we still have our free will making decisions and choices for the whole. The goal in the future is to have more of you awaken so that the collective, and meaning all of you, will thrive here on earth and be treated well, be treated accordingly, okay? And I see people being clothed, and I see people being fed, and I see people uh, not living on the street out in the cold elements. And so this is, this is what's coming, that we all look after one another instead of me, me, I, I, and separation. But sometimes 
we must go through uh, some darker days before we reach the light. For it is the darkness or the darker days that forces us to look for the light, to reach for the light. Isn't that so, Kristen? And now they're bringing up the example of when I was really unwell in the past and I was crying a lot and I was really upset. And there was just one day after two years of this where I said, enough's enough. What is it that I can change? And I said, the only thing I can change is my mind, my mindset, what I focus on, because I can't fix what's happening with my body right now. And so once I shifted in that way, it seemed as though answers and solutions came about uh, that helped my body. So once I got my my frequency in a better moving direction and my mind moving in a more high vibrational direction, just a releasing and letting go. I can't fix this right now. But that doesn't mean that I need to focus on the woe is me and victimhood. So as soon as I shifted that, the answers came. And some of us have signed up for ill treatment. Some of us have signed up for certain diseases. Some of us have signed up for the contrast. And in the contrast is where we have a lot of learning and growth. And that's when we reach for the light. And we reach for a better place, a better understanding, and a, a better vibrational frequency, which not only helps ourselves, but it helps everyone in our immediate proximity and the collective frequency here of everyone on Earth. So it's an individual game or path, and it's also a collective one. Are the Pleiadians helping us on Earth, and how are they helping us, is the first question, okay? Yes, releasing, letting go, transmuting. So any heaviness that we have, we just ask to have it transmuted. Also, if we're focused in, in directions that are not for our highest and best good, that are not bringing us into a vibrational alignment, they can help us with that. So if I'm distracted and I'm focusing in many different directions, they can help you narrow that down and be really clear and more grounded in your body. But also, if you're focusing down rabbit holes that are dragging you down with a lot of fear and worry, and you're focusing on things that you feel are lowering your frequency or you're noticing other people pulling away from you and they're just not wanting to hang out with you, uh, then this might be the time to ask them to help you and uh, narrow things down and see you with clarity. We, we think we have to be focusing in these areas when we don't. That doesn't mean you don't educate yourself though. And if we want to see with clarity, or clear knowledge, clear sightedness, they will assist us with this as well. So anyone that would like to ask the Pleiadians to help them, they will help us do so. Um, and again, I hear the same thing that I've heard in the past from the angels, from God, from the Pleiadians, which is the Pleiadian energy has helped to seed the planet and has assisted in the role of helping Earth thrive and in the past, some of it was really survive. So now we're moving into the direction of thriving. Okay, what is the path for light workers in the future? And I mean like the healers, the mediums, the people that are throwing spiritual retreat center gatherings. Like what is the path? Um, some are going to hold hold tight and hold steady. Even if they notice things decreasing, they will hold, hold through the uh, bumpier days ahead. And some are going to hold for a time and then be asked to release and let go and move in a different direction, possibly choosing to come back to a light working uh, role. And that's what's going to happen. So some are going to, like, you look at some of, like, James von Prague and, like, so many of them. They're still in this industry and they're literally moving into their mid-60s, 70s. It's amazing to me to see it. 
Like they've been doing this for 30, 40 years. Do you know what energy, kind of energy that would take? It'd be astronomical. Okay. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> they're reminding me, uh, they have a village of people. It takes a team of people. So rather individually, uh, it takes a team to run something like that. And I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so thinking inside the box versus thinking outside the box. What is the difference? Okay, we think we know, but let's see what the Pleiadians have to say about it. Uh, inside the box presents more of a narrow perspective, only seeing a few options or a few choices or even options and choices in which others have given you and you just follow suit without feeling if it feels best or if it feels right. Uh, sensing or feeling if there's other options possibly other than what has been voiced to you okay or given to you it's like uh, being inside the box is like the equivalent of growing up in your household and your parent tells you what to do but then you can't become an adult and then you only listen to the choices or the options that your parents give you for your future there are so many others outside the box um, now, I get a lot of laughter and clapping with operating outside the box. Operating outside the box allows you to have more of a free perspective. It allows you to take the blinders down and look and see and feel your uh, the answers for yourself, separate from anyone else. And they highly recommend that we operate outside the box. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Is there a prophecy being fulfilled at this time on earth? Okay. So the first thing that I receive is the word rapture. So we've heard of this word before, which is uh, a lot of souls leaving earth, <clears throat> moving into higher vibrational frequency, which is where I see souls go. Like if we had any idea of how amazing the other side is and like where you go when you exit your body, you would never be fearful of death. I've only seen magnificent paths. I've seen some souls, uh, you know, in a school learning from their experiences on earth on the other side. It's like a not the type of school we take here. It's more loving and more free flowing and just learning temporarily. And I don't think they spend eight hours at school. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, they bring me back to the rapture and uh, a lot of exodus or uh, souls leaving earth. And that has uh, been taking place for a while now, ever since uh, 2020. Uh, things have really upticked, more proxy wars going on and also with COVID going on and uh, all the rest of it. So, and then of course, they're also mentioning um, souls that uh, feel as though the path ahead isn't best for them on earth, whereas other souls are reveling in it and can't wait for this path of ascension. And this is their moment, their time. This is their direction to go. Okay, so the first is the rapture. So if you want to call it the rapture or the leaving, the exodus of many souls. Okay, go ahead. Leaving into what they see as being pure bliss, high vibrational frequency, light and love, source frequency. So you you merge into that. And it's, unad it really is, guys. It is unad unadulterated. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It is, there is no end in sight as to how magnificent it is. Okay. I have seen a couple of souls stuck on earth. Okay. But there's no time for them. So it's not like they're here for a long period of time. They're just here because they're fearful to cross over. And one was very lost. Didn't know its name. Didn't know anything. Didn't know nothing. Just stuck. I don't know how he got that way. I'm saying he because it seemed like a he, but I wasn't entirely sure. And that's where we call in backup to come help these souls. So part of, uh, if you want to call it a prophecy, is a turning of the tide. A shift from the old paradigm into the new. We call this the new earth or a new earth. Except that the heaviness, the corruption, the 
counterweight or the uh, counterpart is also erupting and being brought to the surface. And this is where social media comes into play to showcase uh, what's really going on here. Now we can educate ourselves, but not fixate. Just make sure that when you are becoming aware of what's truly going on, or you're sensing and feeling it, that you you don't entirely turn a blind eye to it. So when you see the corruption unfolding, then maybe you vote for somebody else or or you can take the decision to not vote or you can move off grid and separate yourself from and make life easier living off grid and simplifying your life. It's however which way you want to go. But it, it really is about acknowledging what is transpiring and then taking the necessary action steps for yourself and proceeding. Some of us will be doing you know, picketing and protesting, and some of us will move off into the woods. It's, it's, it's individual basis. Okay. So it's really about the light amplifying here. And you guys have always heard me talk about an ant hill. And when you have a magnifying glass and the sun's coming through the magnifying glass, there's a lot of upheaval. A lot of ants get worked up when there's a lot of light because some of us aren't ready for this amount of light bombarding the planet and some of us were not ready maybe to see that the, you know for example here's another one coming to the surface you know the government acknowledging there are ufos there are et energies out there well oh, surprise surprise <laughs> surprise surprise so you know do we need others to tell us what's true or not or do you go within and feel that within and acknowledge that when we are moving through mud for example sometimes we get our foot stuck in the mud and then we have to pull our foot out and then we have to pull the boot out and then we put the boot back on but we keep trudging forward it's similar like this on earth in that there's going to be a lot of uh, moments of uh, eruption of chaos or upheaval of sorts as the mud is getting cleared out and you sometimes temporarily getting yourself stuck in the mud and then pulling yourself out and then but we keep moving forward so there's also so just like when there's patches of mud that we walk through there's also going to be patches of beautiful pristine green grass and it's going to be wonderful and we'll have moments of this as well but to say that we're going to go back to pre uh pandemic uh, lifetime, that's not going to happen. In fact, we're going to catapult forward with a lot of changes at a very fast, rapid pace. And some of us are going to be ready for this. A lot of us aren't going to be ready for this. And um, so one would be like digital currency, for example. And depending on who we place into the hot seat or the power seat, running things, making decisions, passing bills, whether they're passing them under the table or they're making it known to the populace what bills are being passed. We really need to determine who's authentic or who's, for the time being, who who has more authenticity versus who doesn't. <laughs> but it will get to a place in the future where it, everything will become very transparent. There will be more telepathy and more, you won't be able to hide things like you once did in, in the, in what, in the uh, heavier frequency that we're in now, as we lighten the load here on earth, uh, things will become more open and more clear and more light. And it won't be as easy to lie to others or to make things up or to fib white lies and the rest of it. And so you'll have to be either transparent at all times or very selective as to who you communicate with or allow into your space. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> how cool is that? I, I'm like, wow, because that's how it is now. 
Like when I realized that my guardian angel could hear my thoughts, I'm like, well, here we go. <laughs> Number one, sucks to be you. Number two, she can hear everything I'm thinking, but it was without any judgment. There's no judgment. So we're going to have to move into a place that's going to get real good with no judgment here on earth, right? If we're going to be all telepathically in sense, even if you don't hear another person's thoughts or you can't communicate with them telepathically, you're going to sense and feel their energy when something feels right or doesn't. We already do that. It's just going to be amplified. Your gut feeling, your intuition, your internal guidance system. In the Bible, this is described as like the end of times or the end of days as things erupt and become more chaotic on earth. But what they want us to remember is that it's not the end of days. It's a transition that's going to lead us into like greener pastures or better days ahead. And if we think that... Certain belief systems or certain religions believe that they won't be here during these difficult days. The truth is we're all going to be here. We're all going to have to face it or not face it. Maybe you're not here in the sense of you turn your cheek to it. You don't turn the news on. You don't listen to people talking about what's going on in the world. Yep, then you're not going to be a part of it. But you're still going to be here on Earth. So where your, uh, yeah, where your uh, attention goes, energy flows, is what you will predominantly focus upon and it alter your frequency. Some of us have to face the music or face what's going on. Some of it will be temporary facing, and some of us are really going to like dive in deep, meaning we are going to push against the matrix. We are going to push uh, against the authoritarian dictators that are running the show or making decisions. And it's only us who can uh, decide this, and it's only us who can change this. We're going to go through the mud, then we're going to get onto some nice green grass, we're going to get the mud off our boots, and then we're going to go back into the mud patches, and then we're going to get out and we're going to have some greener pastures. And it's going to be this way for the remainder of my lifetime? Correct. And even past my lifetime? Uh, subsiding. Subsiding. So maybe not as much mud, not as much newer souls that are being born on earth aren't gonna play into this power tripping or the the energy that the old energy plus um the other part of it is those who are participating in the old way of doing things are going to essentially leave earth die right so then we'll have the newer souls operating and so we're just really just making it through this time we're just making it through this time as to the best of our ability. And then over generations, we're going to have the new, the, the new high vibrational souls come and they're going to operate and function in a different way. What's happening right now on earth is the energies, the Pleiadians, source, light and love, the angels, uh, everyone is getting earth ready so that it's an easier transition for these higher these really high vibrational souls and a lot of these souls have not uh incarnated here very often or at all so we're talking about really pure high vibrational souls coming here i've channeled this before and then some of us and they point to me on this some of us are going to come back to earth to help these new souls acclimate acclimate on earth okay so that's that's good but right now we're going through choppy waters we are going to go through some choppy chop and it's going to be off and on and so when we look at the muddy parts like you're telling i've been told for the past year that we're basically going to go through choppy muddy times leading up to 2030 and then coming out of it 2031 and then 
easier times uh, after that for, for many, not everyone. But how long are these choppy parts going to be for roughly five years time? Some of them will be two to three years time, but overall, usually five years time. Okay, the consistency is five years time. And then the good times are going to be how long? Five to 10 years. Then we go in back into the trenches again for five years, maybe if we're lucky two to three years. But this is going to go off and on until the old energy dies off and new energy is brought into the power positions. And we anchor more light, becoming very open and sensitive. Either we're going to pull away from people during these times of sensitivity, like as we ascend, or the people that were around were really going to enjoy being around and be okay with sensing and feeling their energy and and feeling a lot more around them with animals and nature these energies are more in alignment so we'll enjoy being around them and they highly recommend that that's the predominant energies that we spend our time around helping to make forest gardens uh edible gardens uh rescuing and helping animals okay shelly are the pleiadians connecting with you you know what i get with them uh, i get this is their sign they'll do this to a person and i get stroking or soothing you letting you know everything's going to be all right putting your mind at ease at peace exactly right when the top gets too top heavy and doesn't focus on the people and not thinking about the people or what's best for the people, it becomes a problem, big problem. And some of us won't see that because we have our house paid off, car paid off. We have lots of money in the bank. What's the big problem with everybody? What's the big problem with you millennials and you Gen Z who can never afford to buy a house or you can't afford rent? Because the rent's so high, it's so astronomical. Now you have to rent a bed with another person in a room for seven hundred a month, working a job where the the pay raise hasn't happened at all. Right? What's the big problem? <laughs> it's for all, not just for those before us. You're already in great service of the world. Uh, because we've had several readings and I know what you do and I've know I know what you've done and I know that you are of great service to many in ways that I think a lot of people wouldn't be able to handle or do so it takes a special someone to do something in particular and it's interesting like some people hats off to you and accolades and money and to others they do such magnificent work, but they don't necessarily get the accolades or the attention that others do, which is really fascinating, isn't it? But it's really knowing our own self-worth and what we've done and what we've accomplished. That's, that's the message that they want you to hear. They funneled that through me. <laughs> okay. Um, so in the future, do you foresee her helping humanity in a different way? Well, the first thing they want for you is to take a break. <laughs> Amen and <man. laughs> And I don't mean that in a religious way. I mean, like, <laughs> like seriously. Breaky break time's coming. Okay, so whether that's two months, four months, six months, working with others or for another who is self-employed. Cool. So you're going to help be a part of a team with somebody that is self-employed who is helping others and helping humanity and it's greatly rewarding and hiring you on a part-time basis to help others alongside of them. And I just got two, sorry, three big thumbs up in my face. How cool is that? Now, they're not telling me what this is, but I could make an uh, I can make a jump in saying that it it would be similar like somebody's holding spiritual retreats near your home on a beautiful piece of land and you get to go out on that piece of land and maybe they have horses and you get to 
you know, be around the animals and you get to be around the people. And then you have like a group of 30, maybe 50 people that come in for five nights and you help with teaching one of the classes or you help with the cleanup in the kitchen and you all sit around the fire and it's super rewarding and and you get paid really nicely for the part-time work that you're doing with them. Now, lamps turning on and off, that can be your own energy doing that. Are you noticing a lot of energy funneling through your body at night when you're trying to sleep? Are you getting a lot of light frequency opening your chakras up? Light frequency meaning source frequency. Have you noticed your chakras feel really open? You'll notice your chakras are closed. This is how I felt in Florida when I was there. <laughs> Now, it might be different for somebody else, but for my body, my chakras were like like that. And and there's this, this, like this heaviness in my body all the time. And I felt like sleeping a lot. Now, when I come back home, my chakras feel like they're the, open, open. Oh, everything feels fresh and energized, and I feel so good when I go out for a walk. And uh, I could have a nap or not because I feel so good okay good to note so sometimes you're out of the house you come home the lamps on <laughs> you're not even around the lamp and the lamp is on <laughs> okay so sometimes it's our own energy that can mess with electronics especially when we're anchoring a lot of light that can be a possibility is that the case or is someone messing with the lamp it's another energy influencing your lamp it's not your energy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It feels like a soul to me, too. It's 3 a.m. your time. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's a soul. It is a soul. So who is it? Does it feel male or female? Has your grandmother passed away on your mother's side? And was she a little forthright? Like, when I feel my Nana, she'll come through really edgy. She doesn't come through as, like, super feminine and... <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't come through like that, okay? She comes through as like Kristen. <laughs> okay. Uh, nuh, nuh, nuh. So what I'm getting here is a grandmother energy. Okay. So your mother's mother has passed, and that's who's doing this. Why are you doing this with the lamps? To get your attention? To let you know you're not alone? It's a... <laughs> okay, you remember what they said about soothing you? Let okay, be at peace. Everything's okay. And your grandma says that she's a part of the soothing team. <laughs> Is that funny? Okay, so she's here to help you as well in the same way that the Pleiadians are helping you. And anything else we want to add? She wants you and everyone to know that she's okay and that she's doing wonderfully and that she's here with you. And any time that you see the lamp flip on, it's a sign from her that she's with you, that she loves you, that she's watching over you and guiding you, and that everything's okay, that everything's okay. Isn't that cool? So are you going to keep doing the lamp as often as you have? Or are you going to do a little less? Are you going to try something up? Are you going to you going to do something, something a little new? Less often with the lamp now that you know it's her. Because she knew that at some point you would ask someone who it was and that she would be able to get through in this way to you. She just wants you to know that she's here with you, here for you. And I don't know if you feel this, but she's working on my heart chakra and my soul, my solar chakra. So she's doing something to my chakras that needs to be done. So I don't know if you feel that in the center of your chest, but that's for you, not for me. Opening the heart, expansion. Which what? Why would she open your chakras? Because then it allows more light to pummel in through your body, to transmute the heaviness, to lift you to new heights, to let you know that everything's okay. You got major backup here. And um, the reason why I'm saying that is because she's telling me that. She's telling me you have a lot of support here. Cool. Oh, she was very bold and no nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> she still is. <laughs> Yeah, there's no like, you know, no, no. She's very direct. Mm -hmm. How awesome is that, Shelly? Are you going to try anything new other than the lamp? 
uh, like leading into summer, it's going to be butterflies or insects. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, you know, just remember, guys, like there's always an answer for the health, either to make it a little bit better or a lot better. Um, one thing that I've come across in the past year is, and it was my guardian angel that told me to do this. <laughs> I was having UTIs, okay? And so, uh, especially when I went to have all my teeth out, I was bedridden for a, for a month. And then it took me another two and a half months to really uh, get back on my feet. So, So with that being said, antibiotic antibiotic from the doctor and it just gets to the point where they can't give you none more and i'm like i don't want to be on any more so what am i gonna do for a uti i don't know about bladder infections but i try this anyways to see if it works um some people will say oh cranberry juice never worked for me okay nothing ever worked antibiotic was the only thing but what my angel guided me to take was liquid garlic caps from the health food store, you know, the big boys? And it's liquid garlic. It's the equivalent of eight cloves of garlic in one capsule. You take two of those down, because that's the limit, the top, top limit that you can take. 16 <laughs> cloves of garlic in two capsules. And I'm telling you, like, when that went down, my UTI disappears in about four hours or less. And I was like, thank God, this. Thank God you guided me in this direction. So if you ever have UTIs or bladder infections, try liquid garlic caps. And if it doesn't work with one cap, take two. Take the limit on the bottle it says you can take. You can take it with food, or preferably. <laughs> uh, although I've taken it without food and it didn't seem to bother me too much. And I'm one with a sensitive digestive tract. So, so, so that worked tremendously and I haven't had them since. So thank you, liquid garlic caps. So Holly, we're going to ask that the angels come in and help you through this time and this hard week and to transmute anything that needs to be transmuted, meaning bombarding it with the light, anyone or anything that is affecting you heavily or negatively, we ask that it gets transmuted into the light, bombarded by the light, and that the days ahead become easier as we ask for this transmutation. And if there are some bumpy times in the days ahead, they must be there for a reason. After we've asked this, you must face whatever is before you, but anything else needs to go and be bombarded by the light. We ask for this or something better. Thank you, angels. You got the petting too, so have I. Same with Lorna Byrne. And she named her book, Angels in My Hair. If you haven't read that, highly recommend it. <laughs> They're in her hair, too. <laughs> I love it. All right, everyone, I'm going to just see if there's any last words. Be kind to one another. Please try your best to be patient when driving and out in the public. Know that this time is erupting to the surface for a reason. Try to see things with transparency and clarity, meaning if you catch yourself always saying, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to have this be really clear and really transparent and the angels are going to help me and the Pleiadians are going to help me make things really crystal clear for the days ahead, now and always. They very much want to help us make things very clear, bring about clarity. Thank you, dear ones. Much love to each of you, the Pleiadians.